The Book of Psalms in the Old Testament is a collection of songs written about and to God. While many of these songs celebrate God's faithfulness and sing praise to Him, there are others that are considerably more downcast, angry at God for abandoning them and questioning His faithfulness. In fact, the Bible has many stories of devout, holy people who questioned God. From Job, who lost everything, to David, king of the Israelites, who wrote many of those psalms, and even Jesus himself in the Garden of Gethsemane. Doubting God is never portrayed in the Bible as a negative thought you should avoid, but rather a step towards understanding God a little bit better. In 2015, two darling indie folk artists wrote their own psalms. Two albums about times in their own lives when their faith was put to the test and felt like they had been abandoned by God. Sufjan Stevens has never been shy in his music about his Christian faith. His album Seven Swans is entirely devoted to the weaving of personal experiences with Bible stories, and he often conflates ideas of romantic love with his personal relationship to Jesus. To be alone with me, you went upon a Sufjan grew up in Michigan and was primarily raised by his father and stepmother. However, he spent a number of childhood summers in Oregon with his biological mother Carrie and stepfather Lowell. Carrie suffered from depression, schizophrenia, and alcoholism. So Sufjan's relationship with his mother had always been fairly strained. In many ways, he was closer to Lowell, who was able to provide stability for Carrie's children during these trips. Lowell has even been involved in Sufjan's music career, helping to run his record label Asthmatic Kitty, and the pair releasing the album Aporia together in March of 2020. On his 2015 album Carrie and Lowell, Sufjan offers small vignettes of his time in Oregon, and particularly of his mother. In Should Have Known Better, Sufjan recalls a memory of Carrie forgetting about him in public. When I was three, three, maybe four, she left us at that video store. Her negligence is also apparent in the song Eugene, as Sufjan speaks of trying to attract his mother's attention. I just wanted to be near you. He suggests that Carrie cared more about her smoking than she did her children. Some part of me was lost in your sleeve where you hid your cigarettes. Despite being quite distant from his mother for much of his life, Sufjan found himself deeply affected by her death from stomach cancer in 2012. Her death was so devastating to me because of the vacancy within me. I was trying to gather as much as I could of her, in my mind, my memory, my recollections, but I have nothing. It felt unsolvable. There is definitely a deep regret and grief and anger. But Sufjan isn't interested in laying blame. In the very first song, he tells Carrie that he forgives her. I forgive you, mother. I can hear you. And I love to be near you. His mother's death has not brought feelings of resentment towards her, but of love and missed opportunities. The song Fourth of July puts Sufjan in conversation with Carrie at her deathbed. There is an intimacy between the two as they trade pet names and try to console one another. Shall we look at the moon, my little loon? Why do you cry? It's a relationship that they likely didn't experience while she was alive. Sufjan's frustrations are instead directed toward God. In Drawn to the Blood, he once again likens his faith to a physical relationship, depicting God as an abusive partner. The strength of his arm My lover caught me off guard the strength of his arm is a reference to Luke 1.51, a line from a song that Mary, the mother of Jesus, sings when she discovers she is pregnant. 
Sufyan questions why God has turned around and used their righteous strength against him. For my prayer has always been love. What did I do to deserve this? Sufyan also uses the biblical story of Samson and Delilah to suggest the betrayal he feels, and conjures an image of broken faith with a one-winged dove. This crisis of faith sent Sufyan down a path of self-destructive behaviours. He shared with Pitchfork how engaging in the same patterns as his mother somehow connected him to her. He mentions this in No Shade in the Shadow of the Cross, making references to substance abuse and self-harm, and ending the song with its lamentful title. There's no shade in the shadow of the cross. The foot of the cross is a place of peace and comfort for Christians, a position of supplication that serves as a reminder of the saving grace of Jesus. But for Sufyan, he no longer feels comfort at the foot of the cross, where its shade may be cast over him. The only thing sees Sufyan at his lowest, the greatest depths of his despair. He contemplates the various ways he could end his own life, but looks for any signs not to. From stories in star constellations, to meanings depicted in water stains on the bathtub. With the final verse, however, he tips the song's structure on its head. Instead of looking for ways to die, he finds a reason to live. Only reason why I And in John, My Beloved, he ends the song with a declaration of faith, more upfront than he has ever been before in his music. Jesus, I need you, be near me, come shield me from fossils that fall on my head. But ultimately, there is very little resolution to Sufyan's anguish. There is no narrative order to these songs, and each one is filled with mixed emotions. In much the same way that Sufyan felt abandoned by Carrie in her life, it was in her death that he felt abandoned by God. If Sufyan's faith was tested by tragedy, Julian Baker is the opposite. She opens her 2015 album Sprained Ankle with the spiritual disconnection she feels in her everyday life. You think that there's a way Could ever get too far You'd ask me where I'd been Like I ask you where you are Julian often feels distant from God, but when she goes on in the song to tell the story of a car crash, she places him at the scene. And I know I saw your hand When I went out and wrapped my car Streetlamp The way she ambiguously implicates God in this accident could suggest she's either blaming them for causing it to happen, or thanking them for protecting her in it. This traffic incident is just one of many moments on Sprained Ankle in which Julian finds God while at her lowest. Throughout her life, Julian has battled against her own mind and body. She struggles with substance abuse, mentioning at various points alcohol, drugs, and cigarettes. And she speaks of her deteriorated mental health, which has led to self-harm. Julian paints herself as someone who spends more time in a hospital bed than a church pew. She feels at odds with her own body, comparing it to dirty clothes and dilapidated furniture. The album title itself is a reference to an injury that prevents you from moving forward, and represents Julian's perceived weakness of her own flesh, a common thread throughout the New Testament. But it's in this weakness that she seemingly feels the closest to God. Her picture of Jesus is the one who spends time with the poor, oppressed, and suffering, not the holy and righteous. Suffering and redemption go hand in hand for Julian, 
in much the same way it did for Jesus on the cross. She equates the two on the song Everybody Does. Cause I'm interested in a carpenter is so elegant a place in splinters right beneath my nails. While this is a grotesque image of the pain she endures in life and attributes to God, it also shares the same imagery as the crucifixion, nails and splinters. In the same way that Sufyan conflates personal relationships with his faith, Julian places her human expectations onto God. You gotta run when you find out who I am. On its surface, Everybody Does reads like a song about fearing rejection from a friend or a lover. But it's this rejection and abandonment coming from God that Julian fears. The same abandonment that Sufyan fears, and received from both his mother and Heavenly Father. Julian understands that in order for salvation to occur, there needs to exist a brokenness which requires divine intervention. It's from this dichotomy of pain and peace that stems her on and off again relationship with God. On the track Rejoice, the expressions of Julian's mind and body are released from her mouth. Addiction through choking on smoke, intimacy with God in singing your praise, and spiritual disconnection when she rejoices and complains. But she finally realizes that God is present not only in her brokenness, but every aspect of her life. Julian now recognizes that she doesn't have to be self-destructive and at her lowest in order to feel close to God. But habits are hard to break, and on the album's closer, Go Home, we find Julian in a familiar position, succumbing to her addictions and in a state of helplessness, having to ask friends to come pick her up and take her home. But in the second verse, she switches from talking to friends to talking to God, confident that he is watching over her regardless of whether she's feeling physically broken or spiritually disconnected. And in the last line of the album, she asks God to take her home, to heaven. The separation from God that Julian felt in the album's first line has been closed by its final one, and she ends the album with a rendition of a modern hymn, In Christ Alone, my personal favourite worship song, while a preacher in the background delivers a sermon. Both Julian Baker and Sufjan Stevens are not considered to be Christian artists. They are singer-songwriters, whose faith plays an essential role in their music, and whose music is an expression of worship. As a Christian and lover of music myself, I've always felt at odds with contemporary Christian music. Guilty that I struggle to be moved by many worship songs, when entirely secular music has provided me with deep spiritual experiences. But albums such as Sprained Ankle and Carry and Lol bring me closer to God in a way that much contemporary Christian music doesn't. These are not airbrushed depictions of God and uplifting statements of unwavering faith. They are full of doubts, fears, and insecurities. Honest accounts of people trying their best and often failing human stories and emotions that are relatable to the spiritual and non-spiritual alike. 